5 o'clock somewhere, and this time I will call the work session for the Perry City Council for November the 14th, 2022. We do have a quorum. Item 3 on our agenda are citizens with input. Are there any citizens here this evening that would like to address the mayor and council?
Um, we also have custom design theaters for downtown and Courtney Hodges Boulevard all year with the exception of Black History Month. Those won't go up as usual. Uh, we will have scavenger hunts and historic tours. We are really uh, partnering with the Perry Area Historical Society because they have a lot of the information already on hand. Um, so I'm working with uh, Ms. Loudermill. We will have Evergreen Cemetery tours, downtown walking tours, as well as um, a Christmas trolley tours as well. So those are kind of things that we're going to be working on with them. And then self-guided scavenger hunt activities. Um, we want to make sure that people can go whenever they want to and explore Perry and the historic significance whenever they have time. So we will have scavenger hunts available as well. Um, and then if they are completed, we'll have incentives for those who complete their card or, or however that is just to kind of get the engagement up a little bit. And of course, we'll have 200 celebration promotional items, shirts, hats, other branded items for giveaway. Uh, we're also talking about selling them throughout the year, such as Christmas ornaments and other commemorative keepsakes. So here's just a, a, a very, like I said, high level list of our monthly themes. We don't want, we want to focus on several different aspects of historical Perry each month. Um, we're going to be doing such, such as Oliver Hazard Perry, transportation, tourism, business industry, uh, public service, <coughs> um, and then one of the ones I really want to focus on in December for the buzzer drop is into the future. So we want people, of course, to know about the history and where we came from and also where the city of Perry is going as well. So we'll have a lot of presentations and displays for that as well. Of course, I mentioned our community partners. We've already been meeting up with them. Um, Visit Perry, Georgia National Fairgrounds and Agri Center. We will be having a birthday celebration just like the House and County did for their 200th birthday celebration. As well as we will have the antique fire truck um, on display there as well for people. And we'll have a, a display in a booth about the 200th celebration. Um, the House and County School District is partnering with us about the educational history of Perry. Uh, the Perry Chamber, Business and Industry, and then of course the Perry Area Historical Society is contributing a lot of support for us to plan this. Like I said, that's a very high level overview of what we're looking at. Of course, there are a lot of moving parts for a year-long celebration. Um, I am always, of course, up to uh, any suggestions or feedback that you have. Um, if you'd like more of the details, I'll be happy to set a time where we can sit down and discuss what's actually being formulated for the entire year. Any questions? Questions, Kelly? Yes, sir. The, as far as like the actual event or the 200th? The buzzer drop. The buzzer drop is okay. Oh, okay. Um, absolutely. We'll be happy to discuss with, with Omni about possible other options. Sure. Any other questions I can answer for you? Well, I know that we are really excited about it. We're hoping that we reach out, like I said, into the communities. Um, and really, have, you know, celebrate the 200 years for Perry. We're hoping for a great celebration. We will have a great celebration. Right? One of the things we're thinking about is the council and the mayor hosting all other mayors from every city that's named Perry at dinner. So they will be sent an invitation to come and have dinner with us sometime when weather permits that. Lots of little surprises throughout the year. Thank you. Thank you. Item 4A3 is the 2023 Promotion Committee Events Calendar. Ms. Hartman. You're up. There are a couple items on there that I want to bring your attention to that are different from years past. Um, 
Our fan favorites are still on there, such as Scarecrow Fest throughout the month of October, um, and Sweets and Treats happening on the Friday before Halloween. Um, the items that I want to bring your attention to is the addition of a wine tasting in the fall. Normally, or at least this over the past couple of years, the first wine tasting fundraiser um, has been held in May this year for, for 2023. We're proposing to push it back into April and then add an additional wine tasting fundraiser to October. Um, the promotions committee is very confident in their fundraising capability for the wine tasting as the one the one this past year is $20,000, which allowed for the alleyway project to get completed as well as some additional initiatives that the Main Street Advisory Board has since completed. Um, so this fundraiser has funded those projects that so they want to accommodate and assist the Main Street Advisory Board in additional funds by hosting a second wine tasting in October. Those will be um, six months apart. And then the other um, item I wanted to bring your attention to is on August 19th a proposed warehouse and sidewalk sale. So we heard from merchants this past year that they would find the need for a warehouse sale at the end of the summer. They have so much extra merchandise that a sidewalk sale just doesn't cut it for them. So what they'd like to do is to host a um, warehouse sale where they can bring all their merchandise in on a Friday evening, set up and have an all day sale. Hopefully the idea would be to, be to have it here at the event center um, and the promotions committee would assist in facilitating that for those merchants. And that would, the warehouse sale would only be open to merchants within the downtown district, not all of Perry. Um, and then, of course, we have our slate of holiday events from Holiday Preview, Small Business Saturday, um, the Christmas Parade, North Pole Party, and then on December 16th, we have just a holiday event. Um, the promotions committee isn't exactly sure what they want to do with that date yet. Um, some things that have been thrown around are carriage rides, things like that, but that all depends on the booking. Um, and availability of those activities. Questions, Council? Talk fast because he's charging me by the word. Um, I notice there's not a tree lighting anything on here. Yes, ma'am. Um, Harry, uh, Small Business Saturday, which is the same day it's happening this year. This year, that's dependent on my application for this uh, proposed special event for this year hasn't been approved yet. So I want to make sure that this year goes smoothly and then I'd like to add it there. Um, but I didn't want to put anything in writing not knowing yet. Okay, that's a good explanation of that. And um, I think having two uh, wine testing events is great. I mean, it's the smartest thing they've done because it brings in so much money. Uh, I've always told them the largest number of tickets are sold out of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. That's so correct. We don't, we don't need to turn down their dollars. Exactly. <laughs> and the additional idea behind that is to say, which the history proves itself to be true again for 2023, we will sell out of our tickets in the spring. Um, and then so if someone comes up and says, hey, I want to participate, I'm sorry, we sold out of all of our tickets, but we will be having another one this fall in October and go ahead and start planning those little Easter eggs to know that you will still have another opportunity to purchase tickets in the very near future for another one. I have one question. I know that you made a meeting about the uh, warehouse sidewalk sale will be for downtown, but what do you call downtown? What about people right there in, in the city? Are they going to be able to take part of it? <coughs> kind of speak to downtown? The way that the downtown sidewalk sale will be is drawn out is what we would um, permit those merchants to participate. That's how it's operated with sidewalk sales in the past. Um, and that's what the promotions committee does is to serve those within our downtown district and to promote those businesses specifically. Could you give me a, a sheet of that for the location? Yes, sir. I can get you a copy of that. Of course. Thank you. No problem. Other questions? I will say that both the Promotions Committee and the Main Street Advisory Board um, have approved this calendar, and that's why it's before you all tonight, because the other committees and boards have approved it as well. Do we have your concurrence to move forward with this plan to the calendar? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, you have council concurrence to move forward. Wonderful. Thank you all. Look forward to a great 23. Yes, sir. Thank you. <clears throat> Item 484 is the proposed 2023 
special events calendar. All right, thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, tonight, I'm going to be discussing our plans for 2023. Um, but before we do that, I kind of want to take a look back at 2022, some of the things that we implemented newly this year, and then also some of the highlights that we had. Um, this photo is up from our fall film series, uh, which was one of the new events that we implemented in 2022. Our final one for the year will be hosted on December 2nd next month, if you haven't had a chance to attend that yet. Um, open streets. So this was a new event that we hosted in June. Unfortunately, the weather didn't cooperate with us, but we did get to host a portion of the event. The feedback that we got from the community was that this was fantastic um, for families. And one of the changes that I would propose making in 2023 would be implementing more adult-oriented activities. It definitely was very targeted towards uh, families with young children, but we could definitely look into implementing a beer garden, cornhole, um, activities that might help to draw in people who either don't have kids, older couples, um, retirees, etc. The Downtown Disco. This was another new event that we hosted this year here at the Event Center. We also utilized the outdoor uh, lawn space. This one, to me, was the funniest event because I actually had multiple people come up to me and basically say, I'm going to be honest with you, I thought this event was going to be a total flop, and it's one of my favorite that I've ever been to. Um, it was really exciting to see the diversity, not only in, um, you know, racial diversity that we had, but also in ages, um, and it definitely brought out a different side that we don't see at all of our events. Um, lots of different types of music with three different DJs, the band on the lawn, um, and I think it's a really good event that will grow as more people understand the concept of it. Um, Food Truck Friday, obviously this is not a new event. Um, we celebrated its fifth season this year, and I think it continues to grow. Um, one of the things that I would like to see as we move into our sixth Food Truck Friday event is more diversity in trucks. Um, so I am actively researching and trying to recruit new trucks, um, mostly from outside of Houston County. Uh, this weekend I went up to Columbus and got the contacts for about 15 to 20 new food trucks that I'll be reaching out to um, and trying to incentivize them to come to Perry and check us out. Um, so hopefully in a sixth season we'll see a lot of new vehicles, uh, new types of food, and continue to listen to feedback from the community for that. The Perry International Festival. Um, if you attended our first Perry International Festival and this year, you'll know that this year the weather was quite different. Um, we had a beautiful sunny day. We had over 25 countries represented, and I do think that this event will continue to grow um, in 2023 and beyond. And then, like I said, the fall film series. Um, we've had two of these events so far successfully. Our first one, unfortunately, did get rained out, but it's been really great to see people come out, um, take place in the activities that go on beyond just the movie on lawn. Uh, this <coughs> month, or last month, we had people coming out and making um, little box cars that the kids could ride or sit in and watch the movie from. Uh, and then the first month, we had the Hocus Pocus characters that the people could interact with and meet. So I think the response has been really great for this. Uh, we do have that again here on the Event Center lawn. So it's making a good use of that new property that we have. Um, some feedback, we do have a survey open right now, and I plan to keep the survey open through the end of the year. But I did want to give you some preliminary feedback from that survey. Um, of all of the events that I listed out, 80% of people who responded said that they attended a food truck Friday, which was very expected. Um, anytime that I'm giving a presentation and I ask people which events they went to, food truck Friday is always the one that most of them raised their hand for. One of the things that both surprised me and made me very happy was to hear that of the respondents, 50% um, of them said that they had attended our international festival. So. With that being said, the International Festival is at its second year, Food Truck Friday is at its sixth year. I think that the International Festival is performing very strongly. Um, I think that in years to come, it will get up to Food Truck Friday standards in terms of attendance. The Buzzer Drop came in third, and then our Open Streets period came in fourth. So it is really cool to see that people are attending some of our favorites that we've had around for years, and then also giving our new events a chance as well. Um, I also asked the public, what are the top things that they're looking for whenever they come to our events? Food trucks are number one, <laughs> no surprise there. Um, but some of the other things that they enjoy are free music, free admission, and then activities for the children. So if you'd like to see more about this survey, um, like I said, I plan to run it through the end of the year, and then I'll bring you formal results from all the questions that were asked. 
So looking ahead at 2023, there's a couple of events that I would like to add to the calendar in addition to the events that we hosted this year. Um, one of the new events would be GLOBA. I'm trying to look for opportunities to host events here at the event center that would minimize um, bringing in additional staff support. So things that we could host for the community, for residents, for visitors within Houston County, a simple day trip, um, but that would not require shutting down streets, bringing in a lot of extra overtime in different departments. Um, and the Yoga in the Park series and our Cat Yoga series this year were both very well received. Uh, the Cat Yoga series we easily had over 100 people in this room every time we hosted it. So one of the things that we're going to try in 2022 is GLOGA, which would involve glow-in-the-dark workout classes, Zumba, yoga, here at the event center. We do already have a lot of materials purchased from the downtown disco, so we can repurpose those for this event and make use of it more than just once a year. The Perry Selfie Pop-Up, this is another one similar to the downtown disco that I think may be a hard concept for some people to understand, but once you experience it, you're gonna love it. Um, if you go to bigger cities like Atlanta, um, Austin, Texas, they're gonna have actual selfie museums where you can go in with your friends, your partner, your children, or by yourself and take a series of selfies um, at different backgrounds. They're gonna have different themes, so depending on the holiday or the region that you're in, they're gonna have fun different props that you can pose with, and whenever you leave, you're gonna have anywhere from 20 to 200, depending on how many photos you take, um, pictures that they're gonna go and share on their social media, and hopefully that will help to spread Perry's message. Um, we'll obviously have some fun photo areas, but we will also have some ones that are branded for the city of Perry to make sure that when people are leaving and putting those photos out on social media, it is helping us to share our brand awareness as well. Vinyasa, uh, this is a play on words with vineyard and vinyasa if you're familiar with yoga. Um, but this would be a yoga and wine event that we can have in February here at the event center. Um, working with local merchants to work on acquiring um, wine vendors and then also some food vendors. And basically it's just an evening experience for 21 and over to come and enjoy some yoga, peaceful, quiet way to start your Friday evening um, in February. So this is a new event that we're proposing. What do you have to do yoga to bring? Uh, well, for the cat yoga, there were I would say at least 75% of the people who came to cat yoga came for the cats and not for the yoga. So I'm okay with that being the same, same statistic for this event. Um, and then this one technically is not a new event. It's just a new to me event. Um, Art in the Armory, I am working with Councilwoman Peterson and the Fine Arts Group of Warner Robbins to bring this event back to the Perry Event Center. We do have a cooperation with the Perry uh, Chamber of Commerce to have this as an official sanctioned event for the Dogwood Festival. So we are in the works for getting this event back up and running, um, but this would be a new addition to our City of Perry calendar for 2023. Um, before you, you do have the full calendar, which like I said, includes the majority of the events that we hosted this year, um, ones that we hosted for years past, as well as the ones that we did implement this year, like the downtown disco and the ball film series um, and I welcome any questions that you all might have if there's anything that you feel is missing if there's anything that you would like to see more of or if there are any dates that you would like to see changed council members
Item 485 is a follow-up relative to Black Lives on the project of the Freeport Park. Uh, this town would like to table this item so we can do some additional cost study on it, uh, as well as being pressed on time of getting it done correctly for Black History Month. And when we look at this being an element in our June team, the thing is all of us work through the cost of those items. That's agreeable. Gilmore, you have had some comments relative to budget concerns and things that we'll be looking at over yeah. the next couple There months. could be some possibility of with the council's concurrence on the delay, we should be able to do that. Okay. So I just want to make sure Ms. Bob Grace is, I've talked with her, and she's agreeable to move it to a June T delay. <coughs> All right. Is the council okay with that? Okay. Very good. Thank you. We'll work through this over the next couple of months. Item 4B is the Department of Community Development. 4B1 is a review and concurrence with proposed right away for Commodore Drive extension. Mr. McMurray. Good evening, Mayor Council. Uh, I must say my slides are not nearly as interesting as everybody else's. Mine are kind of boring and bland. But maybe they get the point across. Uh, Commodore Drive, of course I have an update for you. Saunders Engineering is completed our right-of-way plans and the right-of-way plans have been submitted to the House of County and the City of Perry for review. Our City Attorney's Office is working with Central Point to handle necessary acquisition and procedures. Uh, tonight I'm bringing you these updates so you can review and concur hopefully to proceed with the project. Uh, throughout these slides I go through some properties uh, that we will be uh, referring to. Uh, Robert Thompson, Hickory Hills Farm, Christopher Brown, BGE Investments, Kay Davis, Evans Family Farm, Jerry Davis, I don't know how to pronounce that, <laughs> LL Investments of Georgia, and Sam Dunn Properties. Uh, so the first slide, kind of like get your, help you understand your bearings. Uh, where the red line is, that is the proposed right-of-way we're discussing. Uh, this is Saddle Creek at the intersection of Saddle Creek, and this is uh, Robert Thompson's piece of property. Uh, and the, this is the southernmost point of the project. So he will be the first uh, property owner in fact. Also, that is Sam Nunn's property uh, at the very bottom, uh, south of Saddle Creek. It will have some right-of-way associated with it, too. Can you leave that up? Sure. And one of the critical factors of us getting started with this, as you can see, where that above the blue line, that's Sadie Heights. And if we don't start taking action <clears throat> on getting the right of way for this road, we're going to have developers that are developing on top of this, and it's not going to be available. So we need to really focus on getting as much of this done for the future of this developing of this road. That's correct. Kind of brings me into uh, the next slide. I'm going to skip it forward too far there. What happened? Okay, there we go. Oh, okay, so King's Chapel, which is the next property north, is owned by Henry Hill Farms LLC, and that is the adjoining property to Sadie Heights. Uh, Hickory Hills Farm parcel crosses uh, King's Chapel, uh, continuing north. Okay, Christopher Brown's property is on, on King's Chapel Drive, but it is the adjacent parcels uh, along the eastern side of the property. So there will also be a discussion for right away. Uh, there's a very large parcel, uh, 268 acres of BGE Investments LLC. Uh, that will have a lot more property here that would need to get some right away as it continues north to Commodore Drive. This K Davis uh, has a, a small section of the property there. You can see how it kind of crosses the corner of. Uh, property, uh, continuing on to the BGE 
investments. And then uh, Jerry Davis, uh, which is Alvin, uh, has a property that is to the west of the boundary, and we approach on its, its borderline uh, as we move up toward the Commodore Drive. At Commodore Drive and House of Lake Road, Highway 127, there's a corner there that will have to do some improvements um, to make that radius and turn length uh, as we enter Commodore, Commodore Drive. And of course, I mentioned earlier, Sam Hunt's property, this is back down to Saddle Creek, where it will intersect Saddle Creek uh, directly across from Robert Thompson's property. And uh, there will be some changes there. You can see how the diesel lanes widen out on the plans and the, the width of that turn lane has to get in there. So a little additional route. And uh, that's it for me. Any questions tonight? Questions, Council? This is a proposed right away for a future road. There's no plans at this point in time to have this completed in the next five years or so. Um, this work was done in conjunction with the Houston County and they feel like this is the, I guess, the best that we can do as far as uh, minimizing the impact that we have on any property owner going through there. And Rick Saunders has completed all of the construction type of information that we need on it. So this will be starting to do the work towards acquiring the right of ways for this road in the future. Any comments, Mr. Newton? Yes, sir, that covering. I have a question. Uh, so, we're going to these landowners, and uh, I guess we'll ask them first, will they donate the land? That's probably far fetched, right? Well, I guess the short answer to that question is Ms. Newby is working with Single Point, which I mentioned, who will go through an acquisition process that is uh, a standard process that the City of Perry uses. It, can you describe that for us, So, Dr. Albert, to answer your question, generally, yes. Um, our process, whenever the city needs to acquire property for a right-of-way, would be to talk with the property owner to see if they are interested in donating the property. If not, and it is um, a project that has been deemed, you know, necessary for public purpose by council, then we do proceed with, um, if necessary, eminent domain. And so we have to have survey work done, we have to have an appraisal done, um, and then we proceed from there with that process. Just a day answer your question. Business 
with the new subdivisions because of the interest rate and everything, but uh, I think that's going to be relatively temporary, and so therefore we need to acquire this right away as soon as we can. It's very much the same thing we did with St. Patrick's Drive. <clears throat> we, the city of Perry owns that right away. It's a 120 foot right away that goes into Perry. Fortunately, uh, the landowners out there did donate that property, and so we were able to acquire that. So that's another future road that we know is coming. We have the right of way. As time progresses, we'll be able to get that put in. And this Commodore Drive, to me, is about it's the same type of thing. We we really need to be thinking 25 years from now what that road needs to look like because of the development. Mayor asked, answered one of my questions. It's 120 feet wide that you're asking. I would imagine that's what it's going to be. Yes, and it, it's proposed to be a three lane at this time. Okay. Um, it's very similar to what Lake Joy looks like. Okay. I was just wondering, is either either they gift it or it's eminent domain, we would never purchase it? No, so we start off with just talking to the property owner, explaining the process, asking for the donation of property. Um, if, they're, if they don't want to donate it, then we would have an appraisal done and then offer to purchase it for the oh, fair market value okay. of the property. Okay. Um, it's only after that. Okay. That we they, and we take it by eminent domain, they get paid for it anyway. That's correct. So either way, they're going to get paid for it. Other questions? Or do we have concurrence to move forward? Yes. We have concurrence from the council to move forward. Thank you for your hard Thank work. Thank you. If there's anyone here that's looking for the planning and zoning meeting, uh, that meeting is being held at City Hall. And I want to make sure everybody that is here <coughs> would know that that meeting is being held there. Item five or council member item. Ms. Bynum, please. Thank you for us this evening. No, she didn't. Mm -hmm. no. Okay. Dr. Alford. Mayor Brickman. Mr. Peterson. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jones. Mm -hmm. You guys do want to go home, don't you? Mm -hmm. okay. Item six are the department head items, but Mr. Gilmore, do you have anything for us this evening? I do not. Ms. Newby, do you have anything? No, sir. Mr. Smith? No, sir. Anything for us? No. Ms. King, anything for us? No. Mr. Worthington? Nothing, I, sir. Mr. Wood, anything? No, sir. Okay. Chief? No, sir. Chief Parker? Nothing, no, sir. Mr. Swan, looks like he's getting his. <laughs> I can't, I can't let it go, you know, get out of here too early. Um, so I just wanted to share with our youth basketball, looking at our final numbers. As far as registration, we have currently 525 kids participating. Uh, well, last year we had 397, so it's about, and hopefully Mitchell can help me, it's about a 32% increase in registration. Um, I, I want to highlight uh, one of our programs, the video production class. Uh, that's for our middle school. Middle schoolers and high schoolers, they're in their third week, so they learn, I guess, the formal way to produce videos, to edit videos is one of the one of the items in classes that they shared as an interest. So we were able to do that. Uh, we had a great response to that class, so we're looking to start another one uh, at the top of the year. Uh, and of course we have our 70s, 80s, and 90s dance social, which will take place here uh, this Thursday. This is uh, an idea of a collaborative effort um, that our dance instructors at the Boral Center came up with. So they'll bring their students in and they'll uh, go through their line dancing routines or square dancing routines and, and just have fun. They, they said their targeting age is 40 and up, but they're going to let me slide in. You know, they gave me a pass. Good <laughs> thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, barely made it. So uh, we're looking, looking forward to that. Uh, we have our superhero party this Saturday. Uh, this is similar to our princess pizza party, which took place a couple weeks back. Uh, this is another opportunity for our, for our youth to wear their Halloween costume again. Uh, so we 
we encourage them to dress up and watch uh, clips and, and uh, uh, superhero movies, and then we'll have uh, superhero themed games. And that's from uh, for ages three to eight. And uh, our chess club, I'm proud to say uh, that our chess club has grown. Uh, we had about 56 members originally. We we're up to 73 now, currently, and um, growing. And they, the age, the ages range from four to 75 years old. And in the world of recreation in our industry, we call it an intergenerational program. And it's a, a great opportunity to pass wisdom down to the youth, uh, to cross cultural divides, and for, for our community to come together. So really, we're really proud of, of our chess program. We meet every Monday at 6. Uh, they're getting prepared right now to meet at the War Center. Uh, and uh, our youth are preparing, a few of our youth are preparing for a scholastic chess tournament that will be held in Atlanta uh, at the end of this month. Uh, they're looking to host a tournament uh, of our own uh, during 2023. So uh, we're excited about it. We'll hopefully, we can tie it into the 200 year birthday celebration. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Sounds like you got to get a lot going on. Ms. is there anything for us? Ms. Turpin, anything? Nothing, sir. Thank you. Ms. Hartley? Yes, sir. Ms. Clark? Yes, sir. Ms. Garrett, do you have anything for us? Okay. Ms. McMurrin, do you have anything else for us? Nothing for us. Item 7 is our executive session. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session for the reason of personnel. Thank you. We are currently in executive session. 